do. I'm a geezer. I'm a geezer. The second person has been indicted on a murder charge in the death of Mo3. Devin Maurice Brown was indicted on Thursday on the charge of murder in connection with Mo3's death on November 11th of 2020. Brown is the second person to be indicted in Noble's death and is being held at the Limestone County Jail near Waco. The indictment and subsequent release from the Dallas Police Department of Brown's arrest affidavit were the first public mention that he was alleged to be connected to Noble's slaying. Dallas police said in December that Kawan Dontrell White was the man suspected in the fatal shooting on the highway. White was charged with murder and indicted on the charge in February. White was also indicted Thursday on a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon in connection with the shooting in November. An arrest warrant affidavit for Brown stated a witness reported Brown was upset over a relationship that involved Mo3 and the witness, and that Brown had contacted another witness multiple times before Mo3's death to ask if he was at a specific location. In an interview, Brown said he had recently learned that Mo3 had been dating a known witness and that he was upset over a Facebook video that involved Mo, but of course, denied any involvement in the slaying the affidavit stated. According to the affidavit, records show numerous calls between Brown and White the day before and day of the shooting. The cell phone data placed White in the area of the location Mo3 stayed the night before the shooting and near the scene on November 11th. When he was asked about the phone record, White told officials the number might be his, but said he couldn't remember his numbers, the affidavit stated. White also denied that he knew Brown or had any association with him. Both Brown and White have also been indicted on federal charges. Now, beloved, I'm going to uh, touch on this parable and touch on the desert and touch on Mecca. Medina, the Kaaba, touch on Jesus, touch on the woman clothed in the sun, standing on the moon with 12 stars on a crown. I want to touch on the people that walked in darkness and touch on the light coming out of the east, shining into the west. I want to touch on the parable of the Good Samaritan and how that ties into the allegory of Hiram Abyss and what is the temple of Solomon and what is the temple that we are called on to build and what is the meaning of the square and what is the meaning of the compass and if you have a compass what is the center from which you start to make your circle and what does the circle represent and if we can do that within the next 15 minutes I think we would have had a full evening in peace. This is Greg Stewart with FreemasonInformation.com, Symbols and Symbolism. In this installment, we look at a reading from Albert Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry on the symbolism behind the mosaic or checkered pavement, objects that Mackey says are appropriately interpreted as symbols of the good and evil of human life. Mackey writes, Mosaic work consists properly of many little stones of different colors united together in patterns to imitate a painting. It was much more practiced among the Romans, who called it Museum Opus, whence the Italians get their Museico, the French their Mosaic, and we are Mosaic. The idea that the work is derived from the fact that Moses used a pavement of colored stones in the tabernacle has long since exploded by entomologists. The Masonic tradition is that the floor of the Temple of Solomon was decorated with a mosaic pavement of black and white stone. 
There is no historical evidence to substantiate this statement. Samuel Lee, however, in his diagram of the temple, represents not only the floors of the building, but all of the outer courts as covered with such a pavement. The Masonic idea was perhaps first suggested by this passage in the Gospel of St. John. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat him down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. The word here translated pavement is in the original Lithuanian, which the very word used by Pliny to denote a mosaic pavement. The Greek word was, as well as its equivalent, is used to denote a pavement formed of ornamental stones in various colors precisely what is by a mosaic pavement. There was, therefore, a part of the temple which was decorated with a mosaic pavement. The Talmud informs us that there was such a pavement in the conclave where the Grand Sanhedrin held its sessions. By a little torsion of historical accuracy, the Masons have asserted that the ground floor of the temple was a mosaic pavement and hence, as the lodge's representation of the temple, that the floor of the lodge should also be the same pattern. The mosaic pavement is an old symbol of the order. It is met with the earliest rituals of the last century. It is classed among the ornaments of the lodge in combination with the indented tessel and the blazing star. It is party colored, showing different colors or tints. Stones of black have been readily or appropriately interpreted as symbols of good and evil of human life. In Pike's Morals and Dogma, the lecturer of the 15th degree of the Knight of the East and West discusses the idea of duality or good and evil as a conflict by Pike writing, God is great and good and wise. Evil and pain and sorrow are temporary and for wise and beneficent purposes. Ultimately, good will prevail and evil be overthrown. I'm Ben Quick, welcome to Masonic Symbols. In this segment, we look at what the black and white pavement of a Freemason's Lodge means. The tessellated pavement is similar to a checkerboard with its light and dark squares. It has been interpreted in many different ways, including that that represents light and darkness, yin and yang, positive and negative, and the triumphs and despairs of life. Freemasons are reminded of the highs and lows of life with this pavement, and that all of us have a natural high point, as well as the darkest hour. I like to think of it this way. I know if I'm having a good day, I'm standing on a white square, and then I might not have such a good day, and that means I'm standing on the black square. But it's reassuring to know that after every black square, or every bad day, there's a good day ahead. I say to people, you get 50 Freemasons in a room and ask them what the chequered square pavement means, you'll get 50 different answers. But here's a couple of examples. The pavement could be thought of as a tablecloth, and that actually it's a table. And the Freemasons used to meet around the table and discuss life, discuss the good and bad and the positive and negative. It also could represent a blueprint where the ancient Freemasons used to carefully go about their work and plan their actions for the next day. The pavement holds four tassels and they are the four cardinal virtues of Freemasonry. Prudence, temperance, fortitude and justice. The pavement is situated in the middle of every lodge room across Victoria, indeed the world. Some lodge rooms have black and white carpet all the way around the lodge room. Some others just have a little pavement everywhere it reminds the Freemasons of the good and bad of life and day. 